Hi, I'm John Supan. I would like to spend a few minutes with you presenting the use of land-based and field nurseries for the culture of single oyster seed. Both land-based and field nurseries are used to support the culture of single seed for placement into mesh bags for off-bottom oyster culture. Land-based nurseries are located either at the hatchery where the larvae were produced or remotely at another location where the local bay water is the ideal salinity and color. Land-based nurseries are used to rear spat to a larger seed size for field deployment. Water flow provided by a suitable pump and plumbing needs to be high enough to provide food, oxygen, and remove waste to an ever-growing, thickening seedbed. Abundant food is the primary criteria for operating a successful nursery, as growing young oysters require large amounts of algae, either cultured or wild, in nearshore waters. Nurseries, therefore, are site-specific when using local waters as a food source, easily identified by the presence of green water and thriving wild oysters. Land-based nurseries require daily systems checks to assure that the seedbed is flushed of feces, which can trap rapidly in a seedbed. Stirring the seedbed by gloved hands during regular operation is an easy way to flush such wastes from a silo a couple of times per day. How long the seed is reared in the nursery depends on production goals of the operation, whether to deploy seed into one's farm or sell to a grower, and the mesh size of the first culture bag used. A land-based nursery is cited for easy access to electricity, nearshore waters, and daily visits so they can be operated conveniently. Field nurseries are in-water deployments of small mesh spat bags that support oyster seed, usually two millimeters in size or larger, typically produced or, and purchased from a hatchery. Daily visits are not required, but weekly brushing of the small mesh plastic culture bags of silt usually is needed in rich growing waters. This can be inconvenient than simply driving to a nursery site, but can be a scheduled maintenance while farming oysters from a vessel. Rapid growth to larger seed size is also site-specific for field nurseries, which is assured if a good farm site is selected. Both methods of nursing seed can result of setting hatchery-reared larvae onto microculch remotely from the hatchery. Petty Belger larvae, which are ready to set, can be collected onto a coffee filter or cloth, shown as a ball of 10 million, to be reared to seed size in a land-based nursery until large enough for field deployment. The larvae were added to submerged shallow trays of microculch or finely ground shell to allow setting to occur. The hopeful result is the production of freshly struck spat, shown here magnified 100 times. Generally, 20% of the larvae setting to become spat is a commercially acceptable result. This manual can be downloaded for more information on remote setting for seed production using the link at the bottom, produced by the Louisiana Sea Grant College program. Bottle silo nurseries have become commonplace in commercial oyster hatcheries, nurseries, and oyster research facilities. These systems are built on a rack, typically made of wood, painted or not, with single-sided or double-sided silos, used indoors or outdoors, climate permitting, along a wall, freestanding on a pallet, bolted to the edge of an existing dock or pier, or installed from the ground near existing infrastructure. Such systems are designed with valve manifolds for individual flow control. Typically, competent petty belger oyster larvae are exposed to microculch in a downweller silo until set, with downwelling continued until the resulting spat are large enough to be graded from the culch. 
Due to the small size of the spat, fine mesh silos are used, which can require higher maintenance due to the increased chance of mesh clogging. Instead of downwelling water through a seed bed, which can act like a mechanical filter trapping solids, fluidization of the seed bed is achieved within a bottle silo, eliminating all the maintenance caused by a packed seed bed in small mesh silos. Bottle silo systems have several advantages over traditional downwelling nurseries. To me, the greatest advantage in fluidizing the seed bed is that raw bay water may be used to feed the seed, depending on whether ambient water is green enough with wild food, reducing or eliminating the demand for cultured algae. Once the larvae set, the spatted culch can be poured into a bottle silo for slight fluidization to allow the spat to grow from the culch. Seed can be removed from an operating silo by simply siphoning them out using a length of tubing. The disadvantages are few. A marble is used at the bottom of the silo to act as a check valve when the flow is turned off to remove the silo from the rack. During operation, the marble moves in the water flow delivered from the bottom of the silo and can spin at higher flow, possibly crushing small seed. Silos made with acrylic pipe can easily crack or shatter when mishandled or dropped. This video of operating bottle silos shows the fluidization of mainly microculture that was spatted eight days earlier. The dark brown zone consists of spat that have grown from the culch. Once the zone no longer increases in size, the spat can be siphoned or graded from the microculch. The microculch can be dried and reused, while the spat can be restocked into a clean silo for further growth to seed size, such as an R2 grade or larger. The ideal flow rate is shown by a slow downward motion of the culch or seed down the sides of the silo. Bottle silos are commercially available for do-it-yourself construction or for purchasing complete custom systems. Used plastic 55-gallon drums can be retrofitted as oyster nursery silos for large-scale land-based seed production. The number of silos in a system depends on production goals and pumping capacity. Instructional videos on the construction of such systems using common hand tools and their use are available online and can be accessed using these links. At some locales, used drums can be purchased from your area soft drink bottling company or other facilities that use drums of syrup. Be sure to choose drums that have a rounded bottom edge so that they will easily slip into the base of the silo. This video shows the flow from two drum silos. Also shown are mesh covers rubber banded to the inside of the discharge port to trap any wayward seed during operation. A water bypass at the manifold helps adjust water pressure at the silos. The left photograph shows a drum silo apart from its base while the right photograph shows a close-up of the seed contained in the silo, which are approaching four millimeters in size. A field nursery typically includes using one and a half or two millimeter mesh spat bags to nurse seed to larger size for stocking larger mesh bags. The diagonal of the mesh must be considered when using seed with any mesh, field bags or silo screens. This formula is easily used to determine the diagonal size of a mesh. This result shows a two millimeter mesh bag has a 2.8 millimeter opening. So an R3 grade seed or larger is advised for stocking two millimeter spat bags. The stocking density depends on farm management. Field nursery management recommendations include initially stocking R2 grade spat into a one and a half millimeter mesh bag at 10,000 per bag. The volume is then split in half and removed to a two millimeter mesh bag after two weeks. 
After another two weeks, the seed volume per bag is again split in half while stocking four and a half millimeter mesh bags at 2,500 per bag. First aerial drying for fouling control is not recommended until then. After another three to four weeks, the volume of larger grown seed is split in half again to a stocking density of 1,250 per four and a half millimeter mesh bag while removing any recruited blue crabs. Longer aerial drying can now be attempted. After another four weeks, the seed can be stocked into nine millimeter mesh bags. Keep in mind that this timeline is for the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico. I wish to acknowledge Scott Reichard with the Auburn University Shellfish Laboratory for the use of his field nursery management recommendations. Videos of the bottle and drum nursery silos were taken at Navy Cove Oyster Company in Fort Morgan, Alabama.